Now, y'all know I hate banks. And if you're new here, hi, my name is Ernest and I hate banks. If you're just like me or if you just hate your bank, there is a bank that I believe that you will grow to trust and possibly grow to love. And that's Ally Bank. With Ally Bank, it's a lot more secure than keeping your money in the shoebox for all our, you know, financial needs. I mean, trust me, it's it's a lot more secure than that. Ally Bank offers high yielding savings accounts that actually help you save money. You know, unlike these other banks over here, Ally Bank is actually helping you save money with your savings account. So it makes sense to open up a savings account with Ally Bank. There's no minimum deposit, not within your savings or your your spending account to get started with Ally Bank. There's no minimum deposits, there's no monthly fees, and there's no overdraft fees. I know that's a lot. <laughs> that's a big issue for a lot of people. That's a big deal. So join Ally Bank, you know, with 24-7 customer service, which is great. They have one of the best, or I will say the best customer service I've ever dealt with within any banking in all my banking life. Like, and I'm not over exaggerating. I really do appreciate their customer service. They truly do care and they live up to their name. They're an ally for sure. Some of my favorite things about banking with Ally is pretty much being able to make crypto payments as well. And as I mentioned before, the 24 hour customer service, you know, you might be in the middle of the night and you're thinking, oh man, <laughs> whatever issues you have going on, you call somebody, somebody's going to answer that line. It could be at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m., 7 a.m. as I'm recording this ad for y'all right now, you know? You can pick up the line, call somebody, and you can get the assistance you need right now. This is a limited time offer, though. So right now, if you hit the link in the description box below, you can win up to $125 for qualifying signees. If you are a qualifying signee, you can get up to $125 dollars for becoming a member of Ally Bank. Now, I don't know about you, but I could use an, uh, an extra $125. Definitely, you know? That's a great way to fund your bank, to start your funding with Ally Bank. It's a great way to start your savings, saving for the future, start your investments with that money as well, or simply just buy whatever you want or support yours truly with that. Whatever you decide to do with your extra $125, it's all up to you. You know, hit the link in the description box below. Offer ends though, March 1st, 2024. So you want to you want to move quickly right now as, as you can. You want to move as fast as you can to sign up for Ally Bank, a bank you can trust, a bank that I don't hate. And that's saying a lot. Because I hate banks, but I don't hate Ally Bank. So if this sounds good to you, hit the link once again in the descri description box below. Sign up for Ally Bank. And uh, yeah, happy banking. Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your man Ernest, or you love Ernest, back again with another episode of the Ernest Thoughts Podcast. We are back with the guests. And this week, I have James Mitchells. He's a crime fiction writer movie buff and a book review as well he's going to tell us all about himself so the floor is yours james thanks for coming on thanks for having me on um yeah as, as, as you mentioned i am a, a writer um it was a a journey i started about uh five years ago that originally i wasn't planning on making it a career it was supposed to be just kind of a personal challenge i had reached a point in my life where I had a pretty stable job. Um, I was starting a family. And I said, okay, I've kind of, on those two fronts, I've pretty much accomplished my goals. So what do I want to do as for personal growth? I can learn a language. I can go back to school. I can I can write a book. I love reading books. Um, so I decided, why don't I just go ahead and take a crack at this? And Around that time, I was on this big reading kick. I was just going through this list, 100 books everybody ought to read. And uh, that's what just motivated me to go on this journey. So I just started on chapter one. 
of the of uh, what would become my first book, Ice Rising. And as I was writing it, about midway through, I started having other ideas for other books. And I knew I was going to break this off into a series. So I'm sitting there and I'm realizing, whoa, like this could really be something. And for me personally, I've never really had, I guess I do now, but I didn't really know if I had a, a talent, you know, like I believe everybody's born with something that's kind of unnaturally better at than most other things and most other people. And um, I, I feel like I kind of found that part of myself. I never knew I had, but I was always kind of searching from. So, you know, five years later, here I am with five published books and the sixth one on the way. Um, they're all crime thriller. And during that time, I, you know, because I self-published all of them. Yeah. So I've also developed a really, um, a lot of marketing tips, a lot of networking uh, skills, a lot of reading, a lot of uh, learning about myself. Uh, patience is one of the mm. biggest virtues that I am uh, still learning. <laughs> this, this point <laughs> yeah most definitely and uh yeah it's it's been a wild ride i gotta tell you learning a million lessons and enjoying the little successes as they come along you know like just recently about 10 minutes ago somebody messaged me and said that they bought two of my books last year and they finally got around to reading them and they said i can't put them down and I wow. told him, hey, I got a third one that's serious. He said, there's a third? I'm like, yes, <laughs> there's a third. I was like, wow. It's... And, you know, even when, you know, a bunch of people have said that they love what you're doing, it's it's always refreshing to hear somebody else just say, hey, I really love what you've done so far. Yeah, it is. You know, I can relate as an author myself and just, you know, doing this podcast, definitely. So I understand that feeling. Um, could you walk us through your creative process? I know you are, uh, well, you have five books out, but it, it seemed as though like writing came new to you. It wasn't something that you've always wanted to do. So like, how was that transition like from going from your life before and then now your life as an author and then talk about your creative process and how's that like? Um, so with my creative process, like, like what I usually do for you know, when, when I'm sitting down actually writing, what's my like routine? Yeah, yeah. Um, I get up early in the morning, about four o'clock in the morning, you know, before everybody else gets up. Um, and that's the best time for me. I can concentrate on that. So, you know, when, when you have a job and kids and, you know, all these responsibilities, it's hard to really just kind of sit down in a quiet room, especially yeah. when you don't have a quiet room <laughs> at all. Um, aside from the bathroom, but you know, I can't, I can't write in the bathroom. That's that's, yeah. that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but what helps me actually is um, I'm a gamer, so like on my days off when I have like my days off is are my heaviest writing days. And I'll sit down, I'll put the PlayStation on and I'll, I'll play for a little bit and then I'll write and I'll play for a little bit and I'll write. So it's like a work reward system, mm -hmm. you know, and it helps keep me stimulated because I can't just stay on the, on my phone where I do my writing and just, you know, typing and typing, typing until I get to my, my, my word count of the day. So I have to take small little breaks to, to keep going. Plus, also people, you know, people have always liked to stigmatize video games and say you can never yeah. get anything done when you right. play video games. Well, I like to think I've I've proven them wrong. Yeah, that's a very like interesting uh, reward system that you have, and a very interesting method. Um, because I myself love video games, but I find myself being too carried away um, at times <laughs> when when I have things to do. Um, so it has to be how I create things just either again with the podcast or just with writing it's it's a okay you have to allot some time for this activity only so to I'll, I'll try that you know system of writing and then gaming and writing and see how it works for me but that's pretty cool did you come up with that on your own or was that something like you've learned uh from like watching someone else uh watching someone else I wish I knew her name um but there was a woman 
who I think I've gone through this list of people asking other writers, you know, how they go about their process. And yeah. somebody else said, I play video games, you know, during my, my writing time. And I said, okay, that's something I should definitely try out. Um, it's had an effect on me, though, to be honest. So whenever I do play video games, even when it's like end of the day, everybody's settled down, I've gotten everything done, even when I turn the game on recreationally, still I still have to be doing something else at the same time. <laughs> it, it'll drive my wife crazy because, you know, she'll be like sitting on the couch, or something going on her phone, and all of a sudden, like the TV's not playing, it's paused, and she's looking at me, and I'm reading a book. She's like, what are you doing? I was you know, why aren't you playing? It's like, I am playing. I just, I have to get this chapter done. And then I'm going to go kill those guys on that video. Game, you know? <laughs> That's interesting. So, That's interesting. Just, just give me a minute. Don't change the channel. I'm not done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's interesting. That's 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 a first because I've talked to many authors before, and it seems as though like I can honestly say like your process is very unique and it's very interesting. So, kudos to it for that. Um, speaking of like your books and your writings, I know I mentioned before you do uh, crime fiction uh, primarily, but are there so, like any specific themes or messages within your stories? You know, when I first started writing, one of the things I struggled with was my, what type of writer am I going to be? Um, when I was writing my first book, I really wanted it to be kind of a, kind of like a message of, you know, staying on the, the straight and narrow. Mm -hmm. um, the message was about using, you know, when people misuse their talents. You know how some people, you know, they, they, they never live up to the potential well then yeah. there's other people that live up to the potential in the wrong way mm. and that was the message and first that was the message but as i'm writing the book and i'm writing other books i realized you know, like, you know what i'm just concerned with writing a good story that's all mm. i want to get out there is i just yeah. want to write i, I want to entertain i love when people just you know when, when they when they come back to me and they tell me like, whoa i couldn't put it down this is crazy I love how this character did that, or I hate how this character did that. And um, so, yeah, I mean, but I like to think that most great books are open to interpretation. Yeah. You, you and I can read the same book and get a different message out of it. So, I mean, if somebody were to read one of my books and say, hey, you know, I read your book and I got to say, it really kind of got me thinking about my life and I wanted to, um, you know, it kind of changed. I want to, I want to thank you for that. I would, I would say that that's awesome. I'm, I'm glad you got something out of there. You know, I'm, you know, but at the same time, I understand like some people have watched Scarface and said, okay, I'm not, I'm not yeah. selling drugs. Like that's uh, <laughs> literally the, the Al Pacino at the end. I'm, that's not happening to me. Right. So yeah, my, my goal is just write a good story. Something that people can really um just take a break from the everyday life which is mm. what books are for me is you know just take me to a different world for a little while yeah read the story maybe gain some perspective while i'm writing it you know little messages that, that they put in the books um i'm not gonna lie i do there are there have been a couple stories out there where i've really put a big strong message out there as well just kind of, it just depends on, it depends on the story, really, and the inspiration. Yeah. And when I'm done with it, I look at it and say, oh, okay, like, oh, I put a message in this one, and I had no idea. Because mm -hmm. I shoot from the hip. I can't, I can't outline to save my life. I just sit down, and I write, and I keep going, keep going, keep going, until I feel like, it's kind of like, like, writing a story for me is, emptying out like a teapot and as soon as you get near the end the teapot's getting lighter and lighter and lighter until it's empty and then hey the story's done the end or to be continued yeah um stemming from you bringing up that uh outlining is one of your challenges are there other challenges you have within uh writing that you've encountered um description mm -hmm. uh deciding where um i don't believe you need to describe every single setting of every single scene of the book down to the t mm. 
Yeah. Um, if two guys are having a meeting in a bar that I'm never going to see again, I really don't care what the molding on the <laughs> at the bottom of the, of the bar stool looks like. Um, but at the same time, if you know the 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 hero meets the female protagonist and she's incredibly beautiful, I'm like, okay. How is she beautiful? There's a yeah. lot of different types of beautiful. I'm curious as to what the author is, you know, what the author's, author's depiction of this character looks like, and if it matches with my own. So, yeah, you know, it's that can be a bit of a challenge. Vocabulary too, you know, just not trying to sound too basic in the wording, and kind of really looking for synonyms here and there, mm -hmm. um, especially with. You know, my editor tells me I used had a lot, like had known, had done, had been. It's like, no, no, no. Get rid of the hads. You're using too many hads. There's more hads than commas. So, yeah, yeah, there's always a challenge. I, I like to say I'm I'm a good writer. I'm a great storyteller. But I'm, I'm, I'm a good writer. My editor helps me become a better writer. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's part of the process, you know, and as long as people enjoy the content i feel as though they will look past those things um obviously i'm not saying like don't work on it <laughs> just even worry about you know the story but people are enjoying the story i mean it's part of the process and um yeah it's you know going to eventually work itself out so right exactly yeah um any advice for either asp aspiring authors or um People who are, and they'll probably be considered aspiring authors too, but people who have a similar story to you where they were doing something before they decided to start writing and, you know, wanted to either get into writing and they thought, oh, well, let me try something new. Let's try, you know, publishing a book. Well, for aspiring authors, um, I can definitely relate. I was once an aspiring author, and it can be a very intimidating process to start. Um, mm -hmm. And everybody's different. For some people, they need to start writing an outline. For others, they need a character list. For me, I just went with chapter one. Mm -hmm. And, okay, so what, what's in chapter one? I just started writing the first paragraph. And from there, just started flowing out of me. And but the hardest words to type were chapter one, because mm -hmm. you know we probably really do about maybe twenty percent of all the stuff we say we're going to do. And I think it's because we get intimidated because we say, "Okay, how do I take something to thought and make it into a book?" Well, it's a step by step process, and there's a million steps. The first step is hard, but it's very simple. Sometimes it's just, you know, opening up that notebook and just start jotting it down. Yeah. Um, what helps me, what helped me was telling a lot of people I plan on writing a book because now I realize, all right, I'm going to be one of two people. I'm going to be that person that says they're going to do it. I'm going to be the person that's going to do it. Mm -hmm. So what am I going to do? And we've all been that person that says they're yeah. going to do something. And I look back and I said, okay, well, this, this thing I'm going to follow through on, even if it sucks, I'm going to follow through on it until I'm done. And that's another thing I want to tell for aspiring authors, because there's been a lot of writers, a lot of authors who've come to me and said that they have a million projects that they started, but never finished. Mm -hmm. And I tell them, I tell them, listen, just finish it. You don't have to like it. Hate it. Hate it all you want. Say it's horrible. Just finish it. And then give it to somebody else. Somebody you really trust. Like, you know, a, a sibling, a parent, a child, a spouse, a friend, who, a girlfriend, boyfriend, whoever. Somebody that you really trust is going to pick up and give you an honest opinion about what they think. And, you know, I mean, us writers, we're like the worst critics for ourselves. Right, <laughs> exactly. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I'm definitely one of the writers that will start many different projects and don't finish one or at least finish one. And I'm like, OK, I can finish this other one. But in the middle of that, I'm working on something else. Um, yeah. but I did. I did actually finish one today. So <laughs> that was great. Awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank like you. A short story, a book or it's actually 
Well, it's a short story. It's going to be uh, my second ebook, but it's going to be a re-release of pretty much my first book that I wrote. Um, it's going okay. to be, um, I plan on releasing it on Valentine's Day. So for the viewers out there, you're getting an early announcement for it. But um, yeah, it was, uh, it's like a self-help book uh, that I wrote. And it's like somewhat of a memoir of my you know, my, my dating woes when I was in my early twenties, cause I wrote it like then I, I think I was like 22 when I first wrote it. And then when I first published it, I was around 25 or so. Um, so like just dating it as my teens, um, and like early twenties and you know, what worked, what didn't work and things of that nature. So, um, that's what I plan on, uh, just re-releasing and stuff so i finally finished that <laughs> but uh yeah um last question that i have uh i know you mentioned earlier before that you have uh something else in the works as far as another book so do you want to explain that i know you don't want to you or you probably just shouldn't give away too much but as much as you want to of course yeah um so my this book is actually an expansion of a universe I'm working on. Mm. Um, my second book, The Ballad of Johnny Carlo, it's a it's about two people. One is a hitman for the New York City Mafia, uh, one of the families, and the other one's a homicide detective. Uh, her name is Leisha, and she and Johnny end up kind of they they fall in love, but the same shadowy crime organization is after them both, you know, just kind of, you know, elevator pitch. And, you know, the question is, will they walk off in the sunset together? Will they share a grave? Well, when I wrote that book, I had expanded, I created so many different characters, you know, enough that everybody's going to have a favorite and a least favorite. And I realized I kind of had like a, have you ever seen Sin City? Yeah. So you know how, they had Bruce Willis's character walk around the bar and he walks past Clive Owen. Yeah. And then you, you would jump to Clive Owen's story later. That's the you know, same universe, but totally right. different story. Yeah. So I wanted to do that ballad Johnny Carlo. Yeah. And I've done that already with a short story in my anthology series, Life Star Corners. But I really wanted to not really create a prequel, but this book takes place about seven years, give or take before the events of the Battle of Johnny Carlo. Mm -hmm. um, in Johnny Carlo, it's mentioned that the, fan, the mafia family that he had worked for had been at war with a different mafia family. And this book follows that mafia family, the events that led up to the conflict and how they not really had their downfall, but, you know, what led them to become sort of like a subservient mafia family to the... Uh, family that Johnny worked for, mm. if that makes sense. Yeah, and I feel like I feel like if I don't break it up into a series, then it's going to become maybe my longest running book to this date, which which would be impressive because Bad Johnny Carlo is five hundred pages. <laughs> um, this is actually a copy of it right here. That's how thick it oh, is. Oh yeah, I see. <laughs> Whenever I write a new book, I like to challenge myself to something else. Like, you know, Ice Rising was my first book. Okay, big yeah. challenge, write a book. Ballad Johnny Carlo, okay, now we're jumping from first person to third person point of view, mm. jumping scenes. How are we going to keep all these characters interesting? Uh, and I have to create multiple characters that people can follow. My next book, Ice Box, was a sequel. How am I going to write a sequel to Ice Rising? It's going to be even bigger and better than the last one. And then yeah. Life's Dark Corners. How am I going to write short stories how do i cut the fat and yeah. create that character that that, that that dynamic character personality that changes or the chemistry characters that change um between them in 60 pages and then ice rain my fifth book you know how am i how am i going to put my ice character back to the same setting as the first book but again make it bigger and grander than it was in the first book and so this one is um, how am I going to, you know, will this book be my largest book yet? And, you know, how am I going to develop characters that had already been established 
in one book and now I'm setting them earlier. So now in their lesser, not as developed stage, you know, maybe they're not as yeah. wise as they were, they're not as strong as they were, they're not as solid in their relationships with certain people as they were. How am I going to make that happen and make it so that when they read it in Johnny Carlo, it's believable. So yeah, every new book I write is a new challenge for me. Yeah, I like that. It keeps the writing process fun. Like, I think so. Like, it keeps it interesting and fun to come up with a different challenge and say, okay, this book, I'm going to do this and that. So that's a pretty neat trick as well. Um, this question just came to mind because your your books really sound like they uh, they sound really interesting. That's number one. Number two, they sound like they can be movies or TV shows even. Have, do you see your stories being turned into the big screen? I do, actually. Um, I could definitely see my Ice series. Yeah. That's the commonalities of the titles. I can see that getting picked up as like a um, maybe a miniseries or sort of. I would love if they took each book and kind of made its own season, like uh, American Horror Story, where it's all like one story yeah. per season. And uh, Ballad Johnny Carlo, I could definitely see that being made into a movie. Um, I have my own little fantasy cast in my head. If I if I were to sit down and say, okay, here's who I want playing uh, which characters, and yeah. I think it'd be an all star cast. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm the same way, and I have uh, a few stories of mine where I'm like, yeah, this can definitely be on the screen and stuff. And you know, there's nothing wrong with keeping stories obviously within the books, but you know how times are you know some people love reading a lot of people like to watch tvs uh, like yeah. tv in the movies so yeah but i mean that's all of my question if there's anything else you'd like to say anything else you'd like to shout out or let the uh, audience know please feel free sure definitely um for those of you that are interested if you love crime thriller please check all my books out they're all available on amazon um for kindle Kindle Unlimited and Paperback Battle Johnny Carlo also has a, a hardcover version to it. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually have you know, physical copies of all my books here. So that's Ice Rising, my first book, the sequel, Ice Bach. And then, of course, the third, my newest release is Ice Rain. So if you like ongoing crime series that follows sort of like a, a Breaking Bad version uh, type of story where you understand where the character is coming from even though you don't condone his actions and you kind of watch him become more and more ruthless of his character if mm -hmm. you love reading about that transformation or seeing it definitely check these books out um ballad johnny carlo that i've mentioned of course also available on amazon and if for those of you that are just getting back into reading maybe you want to check out a few short stories first before taking out a full-length novel check out life to Star corners also by me james michaels and if you want to follow me, I'm on um, TikTok at James Real Mike. I'm on YouTube at James Michael's Books. You can follow me on Facebook, which is uh, at James the Real Mike. Instagram James E Michaels and Twitter James Real Mike. So kind of play on my last name Michaels, and then it's like Mike. So people call me Mike a lot. Hey Mike. <laughs> yeah. All right. So. All that will be linked in the description box below, people. So please check out James Michaels' stuff. I appreciate you for coming on the show. Thanks for having me on, bro. All right. Take care. You too. All right. No, I don't want to share screen. I want to end the recording. Oh, here we go.